Project Torum is nearing the end of its development, but before I can polish up the game and get it ready for release, there are quite a few issues I need to address. Some of these issues are things I haven't gotten round to yet, whilst others are things that have just slipped through the cracks during development. I've been working on over 25 of these issues ranging from minor code tweaks to new features, new art and even a major game rebalance. So let's explore where the game's at. How's it going everybody, I'm Lewis, also known as Skeffles, and welcome to the 38th devlog for Project Torum, my Iron Age fancy Tau defense game. In the last devlog I made some significant improvements to the Collision engine, which received plenty of positive feedback and suggestions for future improvement. I particularly want to shout out James Heesman for suggesting Quatries, this is something I'm definitely going to try out in the near future. It's been a while since that last devlog, so in this devlog I'll be showing you the highlights of what I worked on over the last few weeks. So click the like button now and make sure you subscribe at the end of this video to keep up to date with the final steps of development. Let's kick off with some small features that I've been meaning to add for a while but didn't get around to since they weren't critical until now. First I added end screens to the game. These appear when you kill all the enemies or they kill you, showing you how well you did with some statistics about your game. Second I added a new sprite with animation and particles to the explosion projectile. I think this has a real kick to it and you can see just how powerful the explosion really is. I also implemented damage fall off to the explosion, which was suggested by Nermin way back in devlog 19. It's crazy to think it took so long to add, but it was definitely worth it. The last new feature I added lets the player know when they've completed a wave. It does this by showing them a message and playing a drumming sound. These are all quite small changes, but in the grand scheme of things, really add up and make the game feel whole. Let's move on to some tweaks I made to towers. First was a pretty dramatic change to the chain tower for performance reasons. A chain projectile would spawn an invisible tower to chain between enemies. This caused an issue because each time the projectile hit an enemy, it would create a completely new tower just for it to be disposed of a moment later. Putting pressure on both the content system and the collision system, that was just not necessary. To fix this I did two things. First I made a lower level tower class that doesn't have a sprite or a drag component on it. And second, I cache chaining towers to each chain projectile, so only one tower will be created per projectile. This brings the chain tower to a decent position and I feel confident with it. The next tower tweak I made was to stop towers being placed on top of each other. This was only happening for new and move towers, with towers loading from a save file working as expected. This was interesting and led me to discover that this was being caused by the tower management pop-out, which would disable collision on the towers dragging component. I'm not sure why that code was ever added, but it certainly doesn't seem necessary. The third tower issue was with tower rangers. The range of the tower is yellow when they shoot, and red when they're being dragged. However, it's really hard to tell if a tower is in a valid area when dragging. To improve this, the range will now be green if it's in a valid area, and red when it's in an invalid area. The last tower tweak was with the ballista tower rangers. When loading a save profile with ballistas, they would look like they were selected. This was purely a graphical issue because the towers hide their range sprite when spawned, but ballistas override the sprite and we're not hiding it. Similar to the features I mentioned earlier, I think these are all fairly small things to change, but really improve the game's quality. The last set of changes I want to go over involve a huge rebalance to the game. These were triggered by some playtesting in which enemies will bypass you very early on. As such, I bumped the reward for killing enemies from 25% to 50% of their health. 
This lets you gain enough towers to defend yourself at the start, however soon you can buy higher tier towers incredibly quickly, completely wrecking the enemies that spawn. As such I took a look back at the spreadsheet I made in devlog28 and readjusted the stats. I took some time to graph the total reward you get from enemies and the prices of towers. This made me realise they are not at all in sync. As such I've increased the price of towers so hopefully you'll be able to unlock a new tower every 5 waves or so. Whilst looking at the towers I also decided to rejig the tier order as I found the chain tower significantly more powerful than it used to be. So now the towers are ordered Soldier, Ballista, Freezer, Officer, Exploder, Homer and Chainer. I also took a look at tower upgrades. I found they were incredibly powerful essentially doubling the effectiveness of towers. But they cost the same price as a tower meaning there's no real motivation to actually buy an upgrade. As such I've changed their effectiveness to be about 20% and their price depending on their usefulness. So range upgrades are 50%, damage upgrades are 100% and speed upgrades are 150% of the tower price. I'm hopeful this gives a better place to upgrades in the game. The final balance change I made was to improve the support enemy spawning. Previously support enemies were a randomly chosen lower tier enemy that would spawn every 5 seconds. This was barely noticeable since you were fighting higher tier enemies more often. To address this I increased the spawn rate of support enemies and started spawning them in groups. This really makes the game more interesting. The player has a lot more enemies to fight and it puts them on the back foot a little. However this is offset because they are easier to kill and give you more opportunities to gain money. Playing the game with these changes feels fantastic. The game is starting to feel more real and I can begin thinking about my plan for getting it ready for release. This includes going through all the nice to have tasks that I've collected over the game's development and deciding which are important to the game's identity. It also includes making sure the game plays well. Recently some thorough playtesting has uncovered some significant performance issues which I believe are due to unnecessary pressure on the content and collision systems like we saw in the chain tower. And finally I've got to make sure the game is available in as many places as I can handle so I'll be testing the feasibility of having the game work on Android. Hopefully this time next week I'll have a clearer plan of what exactly I want to do and I may even be able to discuss a release date, we'll see. Make sure you subscribe to get notified when that next video is released. I hope you've enjoyed watching this devlog for Project Torum, leave the video a like to let me know you did and comment to leave me any feedback. Thank you and I'll see you next time.